Hi, I'm Gears, Free Star Force. Switching engines from scramjet to fusion. Buckle up, folks. Brie Larson is an American actress, songstress, composer, director, producer, screenwriter, and film editor. On top of that, she's a well-known feminist, fierce, and die-hard fighter for women's rights. We'll tell you about the life and career of Marvel's superhero in this video. Captain Marvel – How Brie Larson Lives and How She Spends Her Millions Brianne Sidonie de Saunier, this is the full real name of the Hollywood star, was born on October 1, 1989 in Sacramento, California. Her parents, Sylvain and Heather, were homeopathic chiropractors who ran a shared practice. Brianne's father is of French-Canadian descent, so French was the first language of our hero. She has a younger sister, Melaine. The future celebrity was mainly homeschooled, which in her opinion was conducive to her artistic talent. At the age of six, she already wrote her own movie scripts and decided to pursue an acting career. Without hesitation, she auditioned for a training program at the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco, becoming the youngest student in the history of the institution. Looking back at her childhood, Brianne shares that she was introverted and sociophobic, but she was always close with her mother. The girl's parents divorced when she was seven, which was very traumatic for her. She and her father already had a broken relationship, but after the divorce, they didn't talk to each other for 10 years. She mentioned in an interview that she always tried to understand him as a kid, but she didn't think he really wanted to be a parent. Soon after that, she moved to Los Angeles with her mother and sister. They did it so that Brie could realize her acting ambition. The family of three didn't live a lavish lifestyle, sharing a small apartment near a Hollywood studio in the city of Burbank. This is how Larson described what life was like for them back in the day. We had a crappy one-room apartment where the bed came out of the wall and we each had three articles of clothing. Despite that, she still has fond memories of those times and she's thankful to her mother for everything. Since the French last name was tricky to pronounce, she chose Larson as her stage name, which is inspired by her Swedish great-grandmother and her favorite American girl doll named Kirsten Larson. She got the doll as a present when she was a child. Back at the time, she used to love making movies at home featuring her cousins. In 1998, Brie made her first TV appearance starring in two episodes of the TV show The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. After that, the young actress was cast in the TV show To Have and To Hold. In the following year, she got guest roles in an episode of the TV show Touched by an Angel and the teen TV sitcom Popular. She also starred as the little angel in the film Special Delivery. In the early 2000s, the girl appeared in an episode of the TV show Then Came You, scoring a role in the comedy Schimmel was supposed to be Bree's breakthrough, but after the pilot was filmed, the project got cancelled because Robert Schimmel, comedian and leading actor, struggled with some health issues. When Larson was 11, she started showing interest in music. Once she learned to play the guitar, her teacher suggested she write her own songs. She took the advice and started composing her own music, which she uploaded to her website. 2001 was marked by the premiere of the sports drama Madison, starring our hero. She also joined the cast of the sitcom Raising Dad, which aired on the Warner Bros. channel until 2002. In 2003, she wrote and recorded a song called Invisible Girl that was broadcast by KISS FM Radio. Soon after that, the young Brie signed a contract with Tommy Mottola of Casablanca Records. We should mention that she and Lindsay Lohan were the only artists who signed record deals with the label at that time. That event was followed by Brianne getting her first leading role in Disney's TV movie Right on Track, a thrilling life-inspired story about two sisters. She's too young. I've got the same kind of car. It's against league rules, isn't it, Commissioner? Not if it's out of official competition. In the spring of 2004, the rising star added the fantasy rom-com 13 Going on 30 to her filmography. In July, she was featured in the teen comedy Sleepover. These projects neither received high ratings nor made the actress famous. In the meantime, the artist had to delete her songs from her personal website because the record deal with the label ended. On December 28, she released the single She Said. Away. 
On July 5, 2005, Larson released her second single, Life After You. The song was uploaded to Kids Online. On October 18, the first and only album in Bree's discography was released. The album, titled Finally Out of P.E., included 13 main tracks and one bonus track. Some of them were co-written in collaboration with Pam Shane, Lindsey Robbins, Holly Brooke, and other famous songwriters. The album title alludes to a P.E. teacher who wasn't very fond of Brie, unlike other teachers. The music video, she said, was featured in the music show Total Request Live on MTV, while Brie's song Hope Has Wings was featured in the 2005 animation movie Barbie and the Magic of Pegasus. She also filmed a music video for the song. To promote her album, Brianne did a concert for KISS FM, performing for 20,000 people. Shortly after that, the vocalist went on a tour titled Teen People's Rockin' Shop with the young pop star Jessie McCartney. She also sang at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. In January, Brie shot a music video for the title song, and yet the album didn't become a success, with only 4,000 copies being sold in the U.S. Later, Larson revealed that she became disillusioned with her music career. She said that she wanted to release her own songs, but the label was hesitant about it. She also shared that producers wanted her to perform in heels with her hair flying in the wind, but she felt more like herself on stage playing the guitar in sneakers. In 2006, Brie appeared in the family comedy Hoot, for which she wrote and recorded the song Coming Around. Fun fact, the soundtrack made it to the Billboard 200 album chart. You nearly knocked me over yesterday. Why were you running? Look, I think it's because I just broke the nose of the meanest kid in school. Oh, I heard all about it, cowgirl, but that's not why you ran off, was it? Just let go. Tell the truth. <laughs> By the way, Larson co-starred with her friend Cody Lindley. Allegedly, he became Bree's first boyfriend and they went out for around a year. After that, Larson appeared in an episode of the sitcom Hope and Faith. This was followed by an addition to her discography. She released songs titled Dear Universe, Power Shift, Superstition, and Stilts and the Titanic. The latter was uploaded as a demo to the artist's official MySpace account. She also covered Indigo Girl's song Closer to Fine and The Beatles, A Day in the Life, which she also uploaded to MySpace. In January 2007, our hero voiced the movie Farce of the Penguins, a DVD release parodying the French documentary March of the Penguins. Following was the failed drama Remember the Days, she also started a magazine on arts and literature named Bunnies and Traps, where she published her own columns and works of other authors. Larson also contemplated dropping acting at the time as she struggled to find gigs. She blamed it on the directors who couldn't come up with characters that would suit her. Losing leading roles in the movies 13 and Juno was especially hard for her. Brie worked as a DJ at a nightclub to provide for herself. One time, she got into a funny situation. When the girl was 18, she and her friend got invited to a college party. She was drinking and trying to have fun when suddenly policemen showed up at the door. Larson thought that everyone at the party was about to be arrested, so she immediately jumped out of the window and took off. Turns out the officers just wanted to ask them to keep the noise down. In 2008, she filmed for the episode named Slam in the TV show Ghost Whisperer. She also appeared in the short comedy film The Babysitter. In October, Brianne announced that she was working on material for a new mini-album and would record backing vocals for Caitlin Crosby. It was assumed that the album would also include re-recorded versions of songs from her debut album, but it never happened. As for her personal life, it was rumored that during that year, she started dating actor John Patrick Amadori. 2009 brought Brie the leading role in the comedy Just Back, which premiered at the Cannes Film Festival. We have a fine selection of sugary treats. <laughs> you guys skip school to eat cupcakes? What are you, freshmen? Sophomores. Ooh, sophomores. Now I want to party naked. After that, Larson starred in the indie drama Tanner Hall, the comedy House Broken, and an episode of the TV show about hipsters called The Bird. She also was cast as Kate Gregson in the TV show United States of Terra, which aired on Showtime from January 2009 to June 2011. King Stewart, general manager. We're glad to have you as a probationary member of the Barnabys family. Hi. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming in on such short notice. Are you kidding? I am totally psyched. In 2010, Brie joined the cast of stage production of the play Our Town. Apart from that, she appeared in Noah Baumbach's film Greenberg and the fantasy movie Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. 
this Edgar Wright's movie became legendary, and our hero's name is often associated with it. Your hair's getting shed. Yeah? So, that's Ramona. Yeah. Okay, I'm jealous. You're jealous? I'm allowed. You left me for that cocky pretty boy. Black Sheep, a song by Canadian group Metric featuring Gree, became the most popular soundtrack to Pilgrim. They also shot a music video for the song. Hello again, friend of a friend, I knew you. The next project that turned the spotlight on the artist was the comedy drama The Trouble with Bliss. Larson portrayed an 18-year-old girl named Stephanie who has a fling with the main character, 35-year-old Morris Bliss. The professor. You teach. I'm having some trouble in my classes. Maybe you could tutor me. You're having trouble in your classes? Why don't you tell me, sweetie? You didn't ask. What do you teach, professor? I'm not really a professor. In 2011, the actress also featured in the criminal film Rampart and two episodes of the American sitcom The League. She had a pretty entertaining role in the 2012 comedy 21 Jump Street. Its cast was nominated for the MTV Award. Yeah, no, I, I feel the same way about you, except girl version. You're a girl. I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's you're, why I put this good. dress on exactly. to remind you. In addition to that, Brie appeared in one episode of the satirical TV show NTSF SD SUV and starred in the music video for Jajam's song Never Enough. She also filmed a short film, The Arm, which she wrote herself. Having broken up with John Amadori in 2013, the Hollywood beauty started dating musician Alex Greenwald. He was spotted sitting next to the actress at the Oscar ceremony. Soon after that, Brie scored the leading role in the drama Short Term 12, which became her breakthrough. She did a wonderful job bringing her conflicted character to life. She portrayed a staff member of a center for at-risk teens. The actress lied to the director about joining volunteer groups that support disadvantaged youth to get the role. Larson did apply to several organizations, but none of them accepted her. Still, it didn't stop the movie from becoming a success. Brie and her stage partner, John Gallagher, delivered such an authentic performance that Short Term 12 received grand prizes from several independent movie festivals, while our hero was nominated for the Film Independent Awards for Best Female Lead. But you know they're going to try and test you, see what they can get away with, so just say no for a while. No. Okay. Kind of got to be an asshole before you can be their friend. You're going to be fine. In the meantime, she starred in the melodrama The Spectacular Now. The movie tells a story about a love triangle between two girls and a senior student named Sutter. The actress had a supporting role embodying the character of Cassidy. You can't just have fun all the time. You have to be serious. Hey, I'm 100% serious. Yeah, about what? About not being serious. <laughs> Another exciting project that Brie got to be a part of was the comedy Don John. After that, she appeared in the short film Waiting, which she also scripted and wrote a soundtrack for. Larson's next project was the short movie Bitter Orange. Apart from that, Brie joined the cast of the comedy TV series Parole Show for two episodes. She also had a guest role in three episodes of the sitcom Community, two of which aired in 2014. Meanwhile, there was a premiere of The Gambler, a remake of the 1974 thriller movie with the same title. In May 2014, Larson attended the charity dinner at Met Gala, the most iconic fashion event. The artist was never crazy about fashion, as she saw it as another place where women are pitted against each other and made to think less of themselves. However, she agreed to work with designers on a custom costume embodying the spirit of heroic women like Joan of Arc. In the same year, Brie went through an unpleasant experience. A Chicago-based hacker broke into the star's Instagram account and leaked her nude photos. By the way, 30 celebrities suffered from the man's actions. He got a nine-month prison sentence and was fined $6,000. 2015 became the year of triumph for our hero. The drama Room came out where she played the leading role. She showcased her talent so well that she won a Screen Actors Guild Award, a BAFTA, a Golden Globe, and an Oscar. Bree spent a whole month at home and followed a strict diet to get a deeper understanding of what her character and her son were going through. Those are pictures of real things. And all the other stuff you see on there, that's real too. That's real oceans, real trees, real cats, dogs. No way! Where would they all fit? They just do. They just fit. A bit before that, Larson presented the comedy Trainwreck and the dramedy Digging for Fire. 
In 2016, the Oscar-winning actress appeared in the criminal comedy Free Fire, where she played the role of a businesswoman named Justine. As for her love life, the actress's representative confirmed the rumors about her being engaged to Alex Greenwald. In 2017, the star was featured in the fantasy action movie Kong Skull Island. August was the month when the drama based on a true story, The Glass Castle, was released. Then, Brie directed her third movie, the feature comedy Unicorn Store. The comedy film featuring Samuel L. Jackson and Brie herself came out in September. She was also the executive producer of the project. Critics acclaimed Larson's role in Unicorn Store as her best comedic performance so far. Joel hates me. No, no, no. I think that he really does believe in your skills and talents. It's just secretly. Um, I think he secretly is hoping that I'll die in a terrible power tool accident. In October, the world saw the premiere of the musical Basmati Blues, where the main character Linda, portrayed by Brienne, had to go to India to find her true love. By the way, the shooting process started in 2012, but it was postponed because of the monsoon season in India. Critics weren't impressed with the motion picture as they found the depiction of Indian characters and culture to be stereotypical. I've got some good news for you. We're sending you to India tomorrow. Me? What? I don't even like leaving my own neighborhood. <laughs> I mean, who does? <laughs> Other projects Brie participated in during that period include starring in the short film Why You've Never Met the Fourth Hame Sister and featuring in the music video for Family Feud by Jay-Z and Beyonce. As an advocate for the victims of sexual abuse in August of 2017, Brie left the nonprofit organization The Cinema Family after several women came forward with harassment allegations against the board. In 2018, Larson became one of the co-founders of the Time's Up movement, which was joined by more than 300 women from the movie industry, show business, and theater. Now it's morphed into a fund that raises money to protect the rights of women who became victims of harassment. The actress sets her heart on being a gender equality activist for the rest of her life as it doesn't feel right for her to be quiet. Meanwhile, in June, the Oscar winner faced a wave of backlash after she spoke out on the fantasy movie A Wrinkle in Time. The motion picture wasn't welcomed either by critics or viewers. Brie wasn't cast in the film, but she called out the viewers who didn't like the movie, addressing her speech to the male audience. She stated that she doesn't need to hear what a 40-year-old white man has to say about it. She wanted to hear what women thought about the movie. After the actress made the commentary, she was dubbed a man-hater. She addressed the backlash by saying that she never wanted to hurt anyone. It is just frustrating for her to see that the male perspective still dominates Hollywood and there's still been a positive shift only in the last few years. The artist fans didn't judge her. They were anticipating her wedding day and seeing the Hollywood couple in the new status. Unfortunately, Brie and Alex split at the beginning of 2019. Sources close to the couple shared that they managed to remain friends. In 2019, the news was speculating about George Clooney cheating on his wife with Larson. They were rumored to have met on the set of a promo video for Nespresso. The information was confirmed only by insiders. Meanwhile, Brie was cast as Carol Danvers, also known as Captain Marvel, in the titular superhero action movie. She got $5 million for the role. While preparing for it, our hero did nine months of judo, boxing, and wrestling training. She also visited the U.S. Air Force Base in Nevada, where she communicated with pilots. Fun fact, the actress is allergic to cats, so they used CGI or a stunt double to shoot her scenes with Goose. She was nominated for an MTV Award and a Saturn Award. This is that moment. This is that moment, Fears. Turn off the light show and prove Prove to me! You can beat me with- After that, Larson reprised her Captain Marvel role in the movie Avengers Endgame and appeared in a commercial for Audi e-tron, an electric SUV. She also played the role of Eva Ansley in the biopic Just Mercy, based on the memoir by the famous lawyer Brian Stevenson. The actress made the producers follow the inclusion writer, which resulted in people of color constituting 70% of the crew. Soon, the young woman appeared in one of the two episodes of the interactive TV miniseries The Messy Truth in VR, got into a relationship with the project director Elijah Allen Blitz, and was featured in the comedy Between Two Ferns, a spin-off of the series of the same name. Your superhero character is called Captain Marvel. Yes. 
Well, they really have stopped trying, haven't they? I mean, why don't they just call it Captain Comic Book or Captain We Can't Think of Anything Else? In the meantime, Brie shot for a Nissan commercial to keep herself entertained during the lockdown. The Marvel star started a YouTube channel where she posts videos about traveling, training, cooking, video games, and DIY projects. She also communicates with her fans there. She often receives negative hate comments, which she reportedly deletes, causing a new wave of negativity aimed at her. In 2021, our hero made a surprise cameo in the sci-fi action movie Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. She also featured in, edited, and directed the short movie The Do Project and voiced the character named Paradigm in the video game Fortnite Chapter 3. In the spring of 2022, Brie Larson joined the Cannes Film Festival jury. Apart from that, she appeared in a Nissan commercial, made another cameo in the TV miniseries Ms. Marvel, and played the leading role in the short film Remembering. She also became the executive producer of Growing Up, a 10-series cutting-edge docuseries, and directed one of the episodes. At the beginning of 2023, she starred in Hellman's Super Bowl commercial together with Pete Davidson and John Hamm. Soon after that, the star announced her split from Alan Blitz, but she preferred to keep the reason for their breakup private. In an interview, she shared that she enjoyed this period of adventure, which included exploring the world and going to art museums. Larson also confessed that people still didn't recognize her in public, and she enjoyed that. In May, the action movie Fast and Furious 10 made its global premiere. Our hero played the role of Tess, Mr. Nobody's daughter. I don't know how she got in. I do. I stole your badge. I'm done with it now, though. Thanks. Well, if it isn't, um, honestly, I, I don't know what to call you. Little Miss Nobody? How about you call me by my actual name? On October 13, 2023, Apple TV Plus launched the retro TV series Lessons in Chemistry, where Larson portrayed Elizabeth Zoth, a woman dreams of becoming a scientist, but she has to face society that is hardwired to believe that women belong in the kitchen. Brie also became the executive producer of the project. What? What is? Hmm. Well, I have recently become fascinated by archibacteria whose cell membranes are ether-linked phospholipids as opposed to bacteria whose cell membrane are ester-linked phospholipids. I also like to cook. In the same year, she voiced an episode of the adult animated series Housebroken. Recently, the world saw the premiere of the movie The Marvels, a sequel to Captain Marvel. It is believed that Larson's salary for the movie will make her the highest-paid Marvel actress. According to insiders, she will get at least $15 million topped with box office bonuses. On November 17, the animated TV series Scott Pilgrim Takes Off premiered on Netflix, where Brie Larson voiced Envy Adams, her character from the 2010 movie. On top of that, she'll appear and produce a TV series about an undercover CIA agent. The project is currently in the works. Brie Larson is a vegan, and she usually cooks for reporters. She's friends with Jennifer Lawrence, Emma Stone, and Amy Schumer. The artist loves doing karaoke, and her favorite song is Burn by Usher. She's also a huge fan of Super Mario games. Being a diehard gamer and lover of the Metroid game franchise, Brie showed interest in playing the leading role of Samus Aran in the potential movie adaptation. She also hopes to appear in the Star Wars franchise. One of her hobbies is mushroom foraging, and she's even a member of the Los Angeles Mycology Society. Recently, she decided to follow her inner voice and picked up dancing. Brie leverages her celebrity status to bring up political and social issues. Her liberal and feminist views, or to be more precise, her ability to speak up, tick off some critics. Larson's net worth is estimated at $25 million. In addition to the ad campaigns we've already mentioned, Larson has partnered up with the Japanese skincare and cosmetics brand Decorte and with the video game company Nintendo. The Hollywood star became the company's ambassador in 2020. The Animal Crossing fan showed some of her favorite games for the gaming console. In 2021, she posted an ad for the adventure video game Metroid Dread on her Instagram page. The actress invests her money in real estate. For instance, in 2019, Larson purchased a house in Malibu for $3.4 million. The 2,000-square-foot property is located on a hill overlooking the Pacific Ocean. It has three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a spacious living room, a classic dining room, and a kitchen equipped with modern appliances. The backyard is adjacent to a brick driveway. The open patio is covered in succulent plants and Italian cypresses. There's also a swimming pool under the stone stairs. In the same year, she bought a mansion in the Woodland Hills area in San Fernando Valley for $1.6 million. 
Although its price was less than that of the Malibu house, it's subsequently bigger, sitting at almost 3,600 square feet. The backyard fits a swimming pool, a spa, and lawns where you can enjoy the breathtaking view of the valley. In 2019, Brianne sold her house in the fashionable and baroque area of Laurel Canyon for $2.7 million. Inside the three-bedroom house, there is a family room with a white brick fireplace and an open eat-in kitchen with stainless steel appliances, white furniture, black countertops, and a breakfast bar. The kitchen is combined with a dining area overlooking the courtyard with a secluded spa. Having sold the house, the actress suffered a small monetary loss of $80,000 as she bought the house for $2.25 million in 2016. In 2020, our hero sold her house in the studio city for $1.4 million. This time, she profited from the deal as she bought the 1,900-square-foot property back in 2009 for $885,000. There's a saltwater pool and spa on the deck area. In the spring of 2023, the Captain Marvel star added another property to her real estate collection. The actress shelled out almost $7 million for the 3,700-square-foot mansion in a secluded Los Feliz, LA neighborhood. Brie made the transaction through a trust that helped her with the purchase of two more property areas in the neighborhood. The Hollywood actress has a car collection that includes an electric Audi R8 e-tron, a powerful Rolls-Royce Wraith, a luxurious Mercedes-Benz GLA, neat Nissan Sentra, and old-school Toyota Datsun 240Z. According to the latest information, her car collection is now a bit more low-key. In May, Brie Larson was seen driving a Nissan Aria. It could be a part of her Nissan partnership since she's the face of the brand. This versatile person believes that her ultimate goal is to do whatever it is that I can so people have the freedom to express themselves and be exactly who it is they want to be. She's been following her dream ever since she was a little girl and she never gave up, even when she failed. Now critics and viewers have recognized the talent and mastery of our hero, but there are still people who deem her too conceited and problematic. What do you think about Brie Larson? Share your thoughts in the comments hard for me to say goodbye to. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.